My mom always said life is like a mystery CD grab bag. You never know what you're going to get. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is another month, October, and that means it's time for another bargain bag. Yes, it is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. Always have a bunch of fun opening these. Uh, yes, Skips may be gone, but the bargain bag feature lives on. And uh, b in between the two bargain bags, I will be reviewing a CD that I found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain section of a fine CD retailer near you. But before I get to any of that stuff, I will be reviewing the CDs that uh, I uncovered in the last month's bargain bag in rough order from meh to yay, basically. Uh, let's get started with them. Uh, first one, I to be honest, I didn't even listen to this one just because it's classical music. It's a classical compilation. I probably have all these uh, uh, compositions on other classical CDs that I've had before, so uh, I just, you know, I was a little short on time this month, so if any of them had to go, uh, forego a listening, it was going to be this one. So if you like classical music, uh, hit me up. And by the way, I, before I forget to mention, if you want any of the cast-off CDs that I have in here, uh, I keep these CDs for about two weeks after the upload date of this video, and if you want any of them, drop me a note either in the comments below or in a direct message on Twitter, and I'll be happy to uh, send them to you. I won't even ask you to pay for postage unless you want to, so what a deal, huh? Anyway, yeah, classical music. Not much to be said about that. Then I had a couple of uh, EPs. One was from a Canadian group called Jones. Uh, let them believe what they want to believe. And uh, then another, this was six tracks, and there was a five-track EP also by a group called December's January. And to be honest, I only listened to these, both of these, uh, just once. Uh, one of them was kind of a more of a singer-songwriter type of stuff, and the other one was more indie rock, and I honestly, sorry, but I cannot remember which was which. But yeah, they both, needless to say, neither of them really left an impression on me, so... Eh. Then we have a freeform jazz combo, uh, by, led by Rick Van Motter, I believe that's how you pronounce it. The album is called Lines Above. And as I probably mentioned to you before, if you've seen enough of my channel, you know that freeform jazz is not really my thing. Jazz, the jazz that I listen to has to have more structure to the compositions. So, I mean, it was okay. It, it was, they were good at what they did, just not my thing. Uh, and then we have a couple of uh, EDM or electronica type stuff. Uh, Crust is the name of this band, and they were more on the industrial side. Uh, instrumental, industrial metal, in a way. Uh, but And they had more electronic elements in it than just straight industrial metal. Uh, not bad, but just not my thing, really. And then a bit more of a straight-ahead EDM uh, electronica synth-type stuff, serotonin. And, you know, they were okay, but, yeah, they just they just didn't have enough, uh, you know, verse-chorus, verse-chorus type of song structure uh, to really get me into the songs. You know, so, But, I mean, if you like EDM uh, electronica-type stuff, you know, as I said... These CDs are up for grabs, uh, unless I say otherwise. And this one, uh, this was by a guy called Dan King. It's called Time Move Over. And this was, it was kind of weird. I liked it at first, but then uh, on the second listen, uh, it just fell flat on me, really. Uh, his voice is kind of like Dave Matthews. So if you like Dave Matthews, and, and, and that's not a bad thing at all. I, I have four Dave Matthews Band CDs in my collection. Uh, you know, he might be your thing. Uh, the song called Something More was really catchy, but other than that, uh, I just didn't get a whole lot out of these songs. It's, uh, you know, 12 tracks, so it's a decently length, decent length album. But yeah, just, uh, as I said, not my thing. That's a common phrase in these bargain bag uh, segments. And then we have a singer-songwriter pop rock guy named Peter Walker. Uh, he's different. There is a Peter Walker who was uh, is a much older guy who is a... I believe a jazz guitarist. I'm not sure what the genre is, but I think it's jazz guitarist. Different guy. Obviously, this guy's much younger. Uh, yeah, singer songwriter, pop rock stuff. Kind of meh, honestly. You know, pretty forgettable in my in my eyes or in my ears, as it were. And then uh, here's another one that I liked on the first listen, but uh, yeah, after that I went back to it and fell apart on my on me uh, in short order, unfortunately. Uh, it's fronted by a female vocalist. Uh, the, yeah, the band is named Carnival Strippers. Uh, the songs are not bad. It's just, you know, they're okay. It's just, 
it didn't stick with me like uh, like most of these others. Uh, uh, although there are, this was actually one of the uh, better bargain bag uh, segments this past month because I found four that I am four or five, actually five that I'm for the moment considering keeping, uh, giving more listens to. A couple of them are, are on the bubble, so I may get rid of them. It's these first two that I'll mention. Uh, this first one, Smart Bomb, they are kind of an emo punk pop sort of thing, you know, kind of, which I, I kind of was about to dismiss on first listen just because, you know, it's just not really my thing. You know, the uh, if you've heard one Blink-182 sounded like band, you've heard them all, basically, in my opinion. Uh, but on the second listen, I, I kind of liked it. Uh, I, I started enjoying it anyway. Uh, one of the highlights on this is a, a cover of Faith Hill's song Breathe, which they turn into a punk pop kind of thing, and they actually uh, do a pretty darn good job of it. It's 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 catchy. They, they kind of made it their own. So yeah, I'm going to give these guys a, a few more listens, I think, before I uh, throw the CD in the, uh, the cast-offs bin. They might grow on me a little bit more. And another one that might grow on me a little bit more is Big Car. And one of the reasons I've decided to hang on to this, at least for a while, is two of the guys in this band, I discovered as I was listening to it and reading the liner notes, Miles Zuniga and Joy Shuffield would go on to form a, the, a group called Fastball uh, a few years later. And uh, I rather liked their music, although I don't currently have any of their CDs. They, yeah, they fell victim to one of my CD prunings uh, a few years back, and I've kind of gotten the itch to, uh, I want to go back and see if I can find their CDs again. You know go figure that's that's me but anyway uh yeah this is kind of a jangle rock sort of in the vein of gin blossoms that kind of thing but yeah it's it's kind of catchy the the yeah the songs some of the songs are rather catchy actually uh it kind of uh showed hints of uh, what fastball would come up with later on although fastball was uh significantly different in sound uh yeah fastball is not quite so much jangle rock as these guys as fast car is but or a big car excuse me have Tracy Chapman on the brain. But yeah, Big Car, their album Normal. I think this was their only studio album, actually. It's pretty good. I'm uh, going to hang on to that one. And then another one that I'm uh, decided to keep is uh, a band called Gus. This is, I believe, their sophomore album uh, called Word of Mouth Parade. And uh, yeah, it's a singer-songwriter stuff. It's actually, it struck me as uh, with uh, how melodic the songs are. It's, I mean, some of the songs just kind of stick in your head for, oh, I found them sticking in my head a couple hours after I finish listening to it. So yeah, it's pretty good and I think it'll just grow on me more with repeated listens. And uh, the guy, uh, Gus, I can't remember what his, uh, his actual name is. I read it online, but it's gone from my brain now. But he's done a lot of video, music video directing lately. So, And then uh, Jay Aaron. This is a, uh, a great Bon Jovi-esque hard rock band from the early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, 1990 actually. And a friend of mine named Jeff, uh, you might have seen his comment in my last Bargain Bag video. He actually has the CD and uh, told me about it. Uh, he kind of liked it. And he was right. You were right, Jeff. This is uh, you know Bon Jovi-type uh, rock, from uh, hard rock from the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And, and as I recall, I didn't have time to give this a, a second listen, but as I recall, there are a couple of songs on here that are instrumental, which is you know something a little different. And yeah, they have, they're, they're very good at what they do. Yeah, excellent stuff. I'm, I'm definitely going to hang on to this one for a while at least. And then last but certainly not least, we have the winner, winner chicken dinner of last month's uh, pair of bargain bags. Uh, this guy here, uh, and kind of like the opposite of a couple of the CDs I was talking about in the other, uh, earlier on in this video, this one on his, the first listen didn't do a thing for me, and I was about to dismiss it, and I am so glad I gave it a second listen. Because, uh, on the second listen, I just kind of fell in love with this guy. I don't know what I missed or what I didn't hear in the first listen, but I am so glad, as I said, that I went back and uh, spun this one again. Uh, this is a guy called Joe DeJesu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, D-E capital J-E-S-U is how the last name is, is uh, spelled. The album is called Instant Gratification. Uh, and yeah, it's just got, it's this great singer-songwriter rock, uh, guitar-based rock. And just the guy has a great sense of melody. It, it, it struck me it had what a good sense of melody he's got. In fact, a track six called Still Mine, is that's the name of the song, it just reminded me so much of later era Beatles. It just has kind of that, that timeless sense of melody and harmony. And it just I just really enjoyed it. That one really gave, left an impression on me. And But that's not the only one. I mean, there are several songs, as I, as I said, that I just really enjoyed and uh, got stuck in my ear uh, pretty strongly, I must say. So yeah, if uh, if you can find this guy on streaming, Joe DeJesu, Instant Gratification, 
give this one a listen. I think you'll be as surprised as I would be. So yeah, excellent, excellent album. So, just like that, uh, that is uh, the rundown of last month's bargain bags. And now let's dive into the first of two bargain bags. As I open them live on camera for the first time, let's see what we've got here. Okay. Rob Heath, One More Day Above Ground. Now, is he Christian Rock, I want to say? No, maybe I'm confusing him with somebody else. Uh -oh. Made in Canada, Canadian CD. Not that that means anything really, but uh, oh yeah, give him a listen. Oh, no. I, I speak of the devil, pun intended. Praise and worship. Word Marantha. So yes, uh, we all know where this CD is going, uh, probably without even a listen. Yes. Sorry, but as I said before, praise and worship music, uh, you know, is, you know, the, the, the high octane Christian music, as I like to call it, just does not do a thing for me. It's completely lost on me. So yeah. That one is most likely going to be bypassed uh, straight into the cast-offs bin. Unless any of you want it, as I said, even that one that I know is going to be a cast-off right off the bat, if you want that CD, let me know. Then we have Jeff Defty, uh, The Descent of Inanna. I have no idea what this is. I miss my Nana, but that's neither here nor there. But anyway... Uh, I'm kind of wondering if this might be... Oh, it's uh, Eugene, Oregon. It's a local artist. It looks kind of like world music based on the uh, track listing, so, yeah. Might as well give it a try there. Then we have Racks, Stacks, and Feedback, the best of CMC Records. And the back insert is upside down. So, oh, Slaughter, Warrant, Motorhead. It appears to be a metal compilation. So, uh, I, know I don't have a particular aversion to metal, so I will definitely give this a uh, listen. So. And next up we have hmm, the United States Air Force Band of the Golden West. Aim High. Looks like an uh, uh, album commemorating space travel, obviously, and possibly commemorating the moon landing. Oh, the 50th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force. That's what it's commemorating. So... Uh, I don't recognize any of the song titles, though, so it may be original compositions. Okay. I like orchestral music, so I will definitely listen to that one. Then we have Slender Means, Rock and Roll Machine. This is, oh, a four-song EP. Uh, one of the tracks, the last track, is live, so uh, yeah. I have no idea who these guys are, so I will definitely be interested to check it out. And the last CD in this grab bag is Geofria is the name of the band, I believe. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Silk and Steel is the name of the album. I'm kind of betting this is a metal band, hair metal, or at least hard rock, maybe. It, it, it's kind of hard to tell from the cover image. Maybe it'll show up better on camera, but yeah, the guys have uh, heavily aqua knitted hair, it looks like. So uh, give that one a try. Okay, so let's take the customary break between opening the mystery CD grab bags and talk about the CD I'm going to review for you today. And this, you may not believe this, but it was total coincidence that I chose a band with this name for this month of my bargain bag feature. Honestly, it is a band called October Project. Total coincidence, I swear. Uh, and this, basically this band is a symphonic pop band, uh, for lack of a better way to describe them. Uh, and they're characterized by, uh, their songs have a foundation of piano, with very lush instrumental arrangements and absolutely soaring vocals. Mary Fall uh, was the lead singer of this band at this point, and her voice is just gorgeous. And she actually went on to a solo career uh, after her stint with this band, by the way. And uh, this is actually uh, October Project's self-titled debut album, incidentally, uh, released in October of 1993. So yeah, October all around, what can I say? Uh, but anyway, yeah, this band's sound is basically, if you think about Enya, you know, the, the kind of new agey type uh, vocal pop stuff, but with more of an emphasis on rhythm section and less of a Celtic influence. So basically, you know, Enya, but with a bit more of a pop rock bend. So, uh, but essentially, uh, but yeah, 
I cannot remember honestly how I first found out about these uh, this band, but I do remember the first song that I heard by them, and that was the song, uh, actually the opening track on the album, Bury My Lovely. It was just gorgeous. I was totally captivated by it, honestly, and uh, it's just one of uh, several favorite songs on this album. Uh, another song called Always has really exotic percussion that gives it more of a world music feel, in a way. Uh, and there are other favorites on this album uh, of mine, uh, like Take Me As I Am and Wall of Silence, and both of which are examples of the more pronounced rhythm section that I mentioned a minute ago, as well as the closing track Be My Hero, which uh, not only has beautiful vocal harmonies, just gorgeous vocal harmonies, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, but the only electric guitar solo on the album. So it, it's kind of odd, a bit odd, honestly, to end a mostly laid-back album on one of the most rock-leaning tracks on it, uh, a, a semi-upbeat rock track. It's, it's kind of weird. You know, Usually you end an album on a more subdued note, but anyway, this is just a great album all around. Uh, this is kind of the album that you're looking for uh, when you're looking for a more relaxed listening experience. This is the kind of stuff you want, you know, quiet, lazy Sunday afternoon, maybe. Uh, this band actually released one other album uh, after this, uh, on the major label anyway, Falling Farther In, which I think I used to have, but somehow I disappeared from my collection. I can't remember what happened to it. But yeah, this is a great band, and uh, sorry that this review is a little bit short, but honestly that's about all I can say about them is just they're just gorgeous. A gorgeous band. One of my favorites, uh, longtime favorites for, you know, well, 25 years almost. But yeah, uh, very, very good band. Excellent. October Project. Give them a try. And now onward and upward, in a matter of speaking, with the second bargain bag. Let's do this. Let's see which, uh, face the bag in the right direction so I can show the CDs without having to flip them around all the time. Here we have... Okay, Supernatural. 360s. I don't know if... It looks like 360s is the name of the group, and Supernatural is the name of the album. So I have never heard of these folks before, so uh, yeah. Definitely will be interested to hear what they have to offer. And then we have Rust, the debut album, Bar Chord Ritual. Uh, yeah, another one that I have absolutely no idea what they do or, or what their sound is. 1996 is when this was released, so... As I said, you never know what you're going to get in these bargain bags. Oh, and then we have classical music, Handel's Water Music, which I actually don't have. At least I don't think I have on any of my classical CDs, so I may listen to this after all. Yeah. Usually when I know what something is and I'm not terribly interested in it, I'm just going to bypass it. You know, kind of like that, that classical CD that I mentioned from last month's bag, as well as the uh, Praise and Worship CD from this month's bag. And then we have Fritz Reinhold and the Bostonian Friends. Starlight is the name of the album. 1998. Oh, it was released on Columbia. A major label. Interesting that a major label released a band that I have never heard of before. Or, I don't know, maybe it's not all that unusual. I don't know. Lots of interesting possibilities in here. Speaking of interesting possibilities, SFT, Travel Card, I guess is the name of the uh, album. Four, five, six, seven, eight tracks on here. Don't know what to say about these guys, because I don't know what the music's like. And then we have <laughs> Ape Hangers. I think I've heard of these guys before. I have never tried their music. But uh, hey, with a band that has the whimsy to name, them, name themselves Ape Hangers, I can't not listen to it, right? Oh, okay, featuring the track I Don't Want to Live Today from the Empire Records original motion picture soundtrack. That, that's probably why they sound familiar. I love that movie, Empire Records. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's a great movie. Great movie. Oh, yeah, I will probably recognize that song at, at the very least. So, yeah. And then the final CD from this pair of bargain bags, Snowman. Wasn't that... Oh, Snow Cone was the uh, one that I had a few months back that I really liked. So yeah, this is a different one. Yeah, it looks very interesting. Uh, I honestly can't tell how many tracks are on it from the back cover art, but it's very interestingly done back cover art, I've got to say. I, I, am, I do appreciate uh, well-done graphics, graphic design. So, well, how about that? Well, there you have yet again another interesting-looking pair of bargain bags, sure to provide hours of listening, enjoyment, 
bewilderment, amusement, terror. But anyway, that's it for my bargain bag feature for October of 2019, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feedback, questions, thoughts, or suggestions, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also check out the description below for a link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.